fit his nature or he does things which is in line with and befits his nature. That's the Islamic position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God does things which is befitting to him in line with his nature. God can do something, uh, and don't, don't cut me off here, but God can do something that is befitting to his nature in terms of what I explained, or he cannot do something that is befitting of his nature that will contradict himself as God. Let me give you an example that both of us will agree on. Yeah, yeah. Is it befitting for God while being everlasting to cease to exist? Whilst being everlasting, no, he can't. That's the type of befitting of his nature that I would say God do you, cannot do. Yeah. Because God is everlasting in his nature, anything that contradicts that, yes. ceasing to exist, is contradictory to his nature of yeah. everlastingness. Yeah. So God, it's not meaningful to ask, can God cease to exist? Because God will always be everlasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you believe God is absolutely all knowledgeable, all knowledgeable? What's that? Is God all knowledgeable? Or is he only knowledgeable about, about something and not God everything? God is all knowledgeable. But in the flesh of Jesus Christ, he is not all knowledgeable because he did not know the hour. Okay. So God in his nature is all knowledgeable? In his nature, yes. Right. So he cannot become ignorant in any way, shape or form because his nature of being divine is he is all knowledgeable. No, I would say God can become ignorant in the flesh of Jesus Christ. Of course. So that flesh is not God. No, that's where you get into the hypostatic union. Now tell me, if you agree God in his nature is unknowledgeable, he will always remain unknowledgeable. So whatever he assumes, if he assumes a coat like this, yes. or a flesh, whatever, that is not God because his godly attribute is always going to remain unknowledgeable. Well then by that standard you would say that Allah cannot veil himself. So then the veil is not God. Allah is simply veiling you and I from being destroyed by the extremity of light, by the power and the vigor of this light of God. So, the veil has. Just because I don't understand, explain to me a little bit more clearer why um, the veil of Allah and is it the Quran or Hadith? Uh, in the Hadith. In the Hadith. Why can? Why is that different to? the veil of God in Christianity, which is the flesh of Jesus Christ. In Christianity, God is two independent, self-sufficient entities, Father and Son, not two, three, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Father did not incarnate, the Son incarnates. So you have a part, using loosely as you used loosely before, which is not appropriate anyway, the Son incarnated or took in a human flesh. In Islam, God doesn't incarnate into a human flesh or anything. He is. He is unipersonal. If I were to use your understanding of what a personality is, a personhood of God is. God is not tripersonal, that one person of him becomes incarnate. It's a huge difference. The veil of God, the house of God, the, the creation of God, these are God's, belongs to God. His creation is not part of him. So the veil protects us but it's not part of his nature. Do you understand the Islamic concept? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? I, I think I'm understanding it. Right. Uh, can I say something? Uh, to be honest, in the whole tr this Trinity debate and stuff, we've yeah. got to a point where my knowledge is yeah, yeah. not great now. So, could I say, I'm going to take what um, you've said, I'm going to go home and try and find some answers. But